There's a scene close to the end of Beach Read by Emily Henry where two writers are discussing their favourite bad reviews that they have received online for their books. And one of them, Gus, got a review that said, one star, did not order book. And then January, the other writer, throws her head back and laughs and says, I love the ones where they accidentally ordered the wrong book, then review based on how different it was from the book they meant to order. This almost perfectly captures my feeling about Beach Read by Emily Henry, um, in that it was, it's a very good book, but I have to embrace the book it actually is, as opposed to the book that I wanted it to be, the book that I thought I was asking for. Yes, it has the least inspiring title of any novel I've ever read, but it has a really, really good premise, or at least the premise I thought it was, was um, very appealing to me personally. So basically you've got these two writers who have been bitter rivals for a long, 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 long time. One, she's a romance writer, he writes literary fiction, and um, they despise not only each other, but also each other's genres. And then as a challenge, they dare one another to write a book in the other person's genre. And it's a bet to see who can get theirs published first. So the romance writer is going to try to write a, um, write some literary fiction. The literary author is going to try to write a romance novel. And over time, or at least this is what I expected would happen, I thought the book would be about how they discover that it's surprisingly difficult to write one another's genres, therefore they develop a grudging respect for one another's genre, and then that leads to a grudging respect for one another, and then over time they gradually fall in love in a sort of enemies to lovers type thing. That was the book I thought I was buying. That is not at all what happens in Beach Read by Emily Henry. Instead, they seem, and this isn't much of a spoiler because, so that, that synopsis I just gave you, that, that premise, that adequately summarizes kind of the first two chapters. But as soon as January starts trying to write a literary novel, she finds that it's actually very easy and the words flow naturally. And Gus also doesn't seem to have any trouble writing the romance. And um, also instead of gradually going from despising one another to falling in love, they seem to have been in love with one another all along. And so they immediately just start making out and that kind of continues for the rest of the book. So as a satire of the publishing industry, which was kind of what I was hoping for, because I write crime novels, right? So I think romance and literary fiction are equally ridiculous. I was, um, I was keen for them both to be lampooned. That's not what happens at all. And in fact, um, as far as Emily Henry seems to believe, actually, that's not fair. I don't know Emily Henry. Um, as far as the premise of this book is that there is n the only difference between literary fiction and romance is that romance has a happy ending and literary fiction doesn't. And that works as kind of a quirky aphorism, but I don't think it's actually true. I, um, uh, I think if you start to actually read liter literary fiction, you'll find that most of it is bizarre, inaccessible, and annoying long before you get to the, um, the final chapter that does not have a happy ending or, or sometimes does. So, um, but again, you have to embrace, or I had to embrace the book that this is as opposed to the book that I wanted it to be. And the truth is that the dialogue is very funny. The sex is very sexy. The, um, the inner lives, actually the relationships between the characters. So not just the relationship between Gus and January, um, which was charming and endearing, but also um, January's relationship with her mother, her relationship with her father who has died and left behind some secrets that change um, her opinions of him. Um, and uh, Gus's relationship with his parents, all this stuff that slowly gets unpacked over the course of the, the book is all very, very rich and interesting and well explored. Um, as is often true of romance novels. I was kind of looking forward to seeing Gus get his comeuppance when he realizes that romance is, you know, just as actually interesting and difficult to write and complex as literary fiction is. But again, that's that's the book I wanted it to be as opposed to the book that it is. So this is a perfectly charming romance novel. I would recommend it, but for its uh, biggest flaw, which is that at the very beginning, January moves to this tiny crummy town and befriends um, 
the local independent bookseller. Like she falls in love almost as much with the independent bookseller as she does with um as she does with Gus, the the guy who who um, ostensibly this romance book is about. But then when it's time to order Gus's book, she still does it over the internet instead of going into the bookshop that already had loads of signed copies. Oh man, as a former bookseller, that just, oh, that really rubbed me the wrong way. Other than that, um, <laughs> five stars, even though I did not order the book. Uh, I'm Jack Heath, author of Kill Your Brother. Um, thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe. If you liked Beach Read, if you didn't like Beach Read, if you have opinions about it, feel free to post them in the comments. I love hearing what other people think. And, um, oh man, and I was about to tell you what, what I'm going to review next, but, but every time I do that, something else happens and I end up reviewing... Like, last time, I promised to talk about this and this and also this and instead I talked about Beach Read so who knows what I'll be reviewing next but anyway thanks for watching I gotta go um catch you later